not unlike Eric Morales, really, in style. An arm length advantage to Pacquiao when measured from the armpit to the end of the fist. They both weighed in at 130. Unofficially tonight, they've both put on 10 pounds since the weigh-in. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The minute... Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, USA. Where tonight, Bob Arum's top rank incorporated is proud to present Double Trouble, an evening of professional boxing for your entertainment. Brought to you in association with Integra Inmediata and AEG along with HBO Sports. All belts sanctioned by the California State Athletic Commission. At ringside, the three judges scoring this first contest. Steve English, Alejandro Rochin, and Marty Salmon. And when the bell rings, the man inside the ring in charge of the action, referee Dr. Lou Moret. And now, 12 rounds of boxing. This is for the vacant WBC Super Featherweight International Championship. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white trimmed with green, official weight 130 pounds, professional record 42 victories including 31 knockouts, 10 defeats, 2 draws and 1 no contest. Damas y caballeros de Tijuana, Mexico, Hector Valesque. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner, wearing red. Official weight, the same as his opponent, 130 pounds. Professional record, 39 victories, including 30 knockouts, with three defeats and two bouts even. From General Santo City, Philippines, the three-time world champion, Manny Pacman Pacquiao. Thank you, Michael. I guess they want me to take more time and everything else. Okay. Right here is okay. Right. Watch okay. your heads. And give me instruction to dress room. Shake hands and wait the bell. Good luck. Good luck. We have a baseball season oh, coming no, to a climax. Go. A football season starting. U.S. tennis open, but halfway around the world in the Philippines where Pacquiao is either a Elvis or Ali, depending on your choice, this is the only event in the world that counts. Velasquez, for his part, says, I'm bigger and stronger. He's not really a 130-pound fighter. Even those around Pacquiao would confess that they think his best weight is 126. But he fights at 130, chasing another big fight with Morales. Hard left hand from Pacquiao. What it may be short in in terms of weight he makes up in explosive punching power. <laughs> Round one produces contact so far. Sufficient to demonstrate that Velasquez isn't going to try to hide from Pacquiao's speed and power. Velasquez saying to Pacquiao, I thought you were a fighter. Let's see you fight me. Uppercut inside by Pacquiao. Stiff right hand by Velasquez. Momentarily backs the Filipino star off. So far, Velasquez is better to the bend his head down. It's been making it very difficult for Pacquiao to land his favorite punch, a straight left hand, use it with his opponents with their heads up. So far, he hasn't been able to do that because of the low head movement. There was the straight the left, left hand. He led with it and landed the punch. In the past, Pacquiao has been criticized for repeating the same pattern over and over in the ring. 
particularly against Juan Manuel Marquez. Jab, jab, left hand. Jab, jab, left hand. Not enough variety. Velasquez avoids a headbutt and bangs Pacquiao twice to the body. Velasquez taking it right to Manny Pacquiao in round one, and Pacquiao looks as though he didn't exactly expect this. No, and, and for the most part, Pacquiao is doing the same thing. He's still trying to land that powerful straight left hand of his. Pacquiao landed a right. Velasquez landed a right hand after earlier driving Pacquiao back with a left. So they're trading shots just a little bit more than two minutes into round one. It's the kind of fight Manny Pacquiao wants to fight, but against an opponent who looks bigger and stronger. And his opponent is very confident and very focused. I think this Mexican crowd right here has given him a lot of uh, encouragement. And you saw Pacquiao look to the crowd and shake his head a little bit as if to say he's trying to butt me with his skull. There's a big right hand by Velasquez. Pacquiao tries to answer straight away with a hard left hand. And there's a good left from Pacquiao. Velasquez holds his hands out as if to say that didn't hurt. And actually your head butts may be a big factor in this fight the way it's going also. They've flirted with head butts three or four times in the first round already. Serious head butts too. And as we go to the corners, where they speak Filipino, or Tagalog, I should say, in Pacquiao's corner, our interpreter is Ernie Kalua. And across the ring, where they speak Spanish, in Velasquez's corner, our interpreter will be Ray Torres. Got it. Now, don't wait on this guy so much. Don't let him be pushed. You'll be pushing your jab, okay? Yeah, right? He said, now we need more head movement, okay? You gotta move your head more. You're, you're too yeah. stationary, okay? Yeah. You, you, you're a better friend. Faint him. Be lively. Be In exchanges, go forward. Throw your jab. Southpaw against conventional fighter. Always a danger of a headbutt. This time they avoided any damage. Pacquiao was bothered in the first fight against Morales by a cut that he suffered in the fifth round of the fight. The cut could have been the product of a punch or of a headbutt. Look at the wild swinging that typifies the action to begin round two. The last raise is nowhere near the accurate uh, power puncher of Pacquiao, but he's still coming in very, very determined, and his style seems to be giving a little problem to Pacquiao. Well, and his size as well, because he's been hit some nice solid punches and uh, walked right through them. Right. Pacquiao's biggest win was his devastating TKO of Marco Antonio Barrera in San Antonio in November of 03. Since that time, he's been fighting bigger guys. Marquez, Morales, now Velasquez, all of them bigger and stronger than Barrera, and it's been different. It's been different. He's a very exciting, emotional type fighter, very explosive. But his biggest weakness, if you'll notice, is after he throws that powerful left hand sometime, temporarily he's out of position because he punches with so much power, and some of these guys come back with right hands and they catch him. What about the fact that he's such a rampant offensive attacker that he has a still head and is not that difficult to hit? That's true. <laughs> Morales certainly <laughs> took advantage of that in outboxing him earlier this year used Pacquiao's head as a target for his jab over and over. Now Manny begins to assert himself a little bit more here in round two. He's trying to find that knockout power with that left hand, and he's getting closer and closer. It's going to take an accumulation, it would appear, but the accumulation could well take place. Mm -hmm. And see, once again, that's what I'm saying. After he throws that left hand punch, that's when he gets caught usually, right after that. But he, he got... Velasquez with a counter left hand in right, that last exchange. Again. That stunned Velasquez. Velasquez now nailing Pacquiao with a right. Pacquiao backs Velasquez off with a left. Velasquez wobbled momentarily after two big Pacquiao left hands. You know, a guy like Velasquez, sometimes you have to watch very carefully. He's so uncoordinated and gangly that you'll get excited thinking that he's hurt and maybe overextend yourself. Pacquiao is starting to get more accurate with both his jab and the left hand. That lead left hand landed flush. 
Now the speed begins to show up. Taki is trying to take a, a, a break right now just to figure out what's going on. He blocked one right hand with his glove, took the second right hand, and shook his head a bit. Pacquiao landing a left in there. Velasquez with a right and a left. Wild action extends beyond the bell at the end of round two. A fight has <laughs> broken out. Yeah. Don't lower your hands. He's got quick hands, that's all. You're he doesn't even know how to fight. You know better. You're a better fighter than he is. This is your opportunity. Don't waste it. You understand me? You are superior to him in everything. Don't let him take the initiative. He can't even fight. You know how to fight. You've been in the gym for a long time. Throw the overhand right and hit him underneath. Come on, hit him hard, underneath. CompuBox numbers through the first two rounds. Power punches only. Forget jabs. Pacquiao's thrown 109 power punches already. Landed 37. Velasquez has unleashed 76 power shots. Landed 28. Straight right hand for Velasquez. No, 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 Olympia, Olympia. Break thing, break thing, come on. Velasquez swinging away with the right hand after Pacquiao popped him inside with the left. And you heard Velasquez's corner, Emmanuel. They think he's overexcited and they want him to be more under control. Yeah, he's a very, I guess you're such a strong pro Mexican crowd, even though you have a good Filipino no, 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 crowd no, no, here, but it's, I think he's gotten wrapped up into the excitement of the crowd here. That's right. He's He's momentarily wearing Eric Morales' cape because he's got the full support of Morales' crowd. So maybe he feels like he's Morales. But also, you know, with about the same token, even though he's not the most talented guy, he's doing something I think is very good with his limited talent, and that is punching that weird right hand that he throws after Pacquiao finishes punching because Pacquiao is out of position usually after he finishes up his flurries. Larry made the point about uh, conventional fighter versus a southpaw. But in truth, Manny Pacquiao doesn't stay in a southpaw stance all that much. That's right, and that's why after why he's falling to get hit a lot. He actually gets square sometimes after he throws punches, like right there. He would just as soon square up because he wants to fight. He's a very exciting, explosive fighter. I love him. He's one of my favorite fighters to watch. Well, if you want to see guys who hit and get hit, <laughs> Manny Pacquiao hits and gets hit. Hard left hand. I have this sense that Pacquiao's speed is beginning to dominate, but that Velasquez is dangerous, and anywhere along the line he can land a big punch that could change the fight. The speed is just such a big difference. Though. Velasquez is just so much slower, and also it looks like Pacquiao seems to be in very good condition. Even though he's punching a lot, he seems to stay up recuperating pals very good and coming back right after each exchange. Does appear to be in sensational shape. Pacquiao is known to be a gym rat, very proud of his training habits. Prior to the Morales fight, Filipino fans in Los Angeles were allowed to come to the wild card gym where Freddie Roach trains Pacquiao and watch him train on a daily basis. After that fight, Roach decided that was too much of a distraction, and this time around they shut them out. No, 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 no. Whenever they set up and face each other again, it's usually Pacquiao who lands first because of his greater speed. His favorite combination is to land up with a right jab and shoot a powerful left hand, and sometimes he comes back out of position, but he shoots so much power that sooner or later he's going to start contacting. Okay. 
somebody comes as hard as Pacquiao, he doesn't have to look good. And suddenly Velasquez is, doesn't seem as confident that uh, the kid in front of him is going to be smaller and somebody he can handle. Well, something interesting on the replay there. If, if you're going to block a punch with your glove, it'd be a good idea to hold the glove firm so that it doesn't go right into your face. As is what happened to Velasquez there. There's the speed and the big left hand by Pacquiao. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three rounds? Okay, okay Jim. Two rounds to one. 29, 28, Manny Pacquiao. Jim, that's what Hector Velasquez did enough with that, that, right, that looping right hand to win round one. But at rounds two and three, Manny Pacquiao with that straight left hand and that move after he hits him has just been murdering Velasquez. I mean, Velasquez has to score when Manny Pacquiao's right in front of him, and that's all there is to it. Power connects in round three. Pacquiao was 18 out of 47. Velasquez, eight out of 38. So Velasquez got a benefit early on from swinging away and unleashing his offense. But more and more, Pacquiao has found the openings in that attack to allow him to land power punches. Yes, that's a very tough fight for Pacquiao. I never expected it to be this difficult, but you know, I guess it's, it's a tough guy mentally, I think, and physically. And also, you know, you basically, Pacquiao's still doing basically the same thing over and over, though. If he would relax and box him, like they've been telling him, he can maybe be more effective with power punches, but everything that he does is a power punch. He drives his opponent into a defensive mode with merely the way he shoots his jab, usually. He acts in thriller movies in the Philippines. He's been in five different movies in each of the last two. He's the star. His buddies are wrestlers and action fighters from other kinds of action uh, fighting sports and combat sports. He wants every moment of his life to be a thriller. Yeah, but it, 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 it is, but you know, I don't know how many of these type fights he can keep having back to back. And when you're fighting the quality guys, you don't knock them out that easy. Well, fighters like this, as you know, Emmanuel, they have a few hot years when they're filled with confidence. And it's the time you just got to take the gun and shoot it. Larry, you're right, but still a fighter like him, he has to do what he's doing right now. He may make enough money in the next year or two where if he does run out of energy, so to say, he'll at least be a rich man. Sluggers. He has in some ways the kind of life that Jack Dempsey had. He has, in some ways, the kind of life that Mike Tyson had at his peak in the ring. Manny which, Pacquiao which, has parallels to both those guys. Which, as fans, we benefit from. <laughs> Absolutely. Every, everything is fine. You took all his punches. Come on, you got to be a little quicker, though. How you feeling? He hit you with everything and didn't do anything to you. You gotta keep throwing that jab, but quick, very swift. Don't let him. Okay. Hey, they showed him, showed him land some real nice body shots out there. I want that body work a little more, okay? Yeah, but I'm Huh? Watch his head, okay? Really? Throw the left hand from outside behind the jab. Right down the middle. That's a beautiful body shot. Jim, you mentioned his movies. He's got a new one out, appropriately titled Licensed Fist, which is opening next week in Los Angeles. And he's also going to... No, 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 in a song called Champion. Licensed fists for a champion. Black Eyed Peas are red hot. Manny Pacquiao's red hot. Good match. Black Eyed Peas are a high contact group. Manny Pacquiao is a high contact fighter. 
and Velasquez is just so relaxed. That's why it's so difficult to hurt him. He's just a total relaxed as bad as everything is easy going, and he absorbs and goes with every blow that he gets hit with. You know, Freddie Roach asked Manny Pacquiao to throw a few more body punches. I sometimes get the impression he could go a whole month without throwing a body punch. No, he just loves to fight. He's a very exciting guy. He explodes up, then he rests, recuperates, then he explodes again, rests again, then explodes again. Wouldn't he make it easier if he would focus on the body just a little bit, Emmanuel? Oh, yeah, and he could box a little bit, mix up his attack. Every punch don't have to be a knockout punch. He can relax his opponent, and then a hard punch would be more effective. But when you see him moving towards you, you can expect nothing but dynamite in every punch. It was a good body punch. There's a good, solid left hand upstairs good set up by the body punch. Velasquez gets in a good little shot to the body. Pacquiao just keeps bombing him upstairs with rights and lefts. No, no, no. right hands tonight than we usually see him. Yes. You know, when he, when he gets tired after his explosion and wants to take a break, uh, his opponent, uh, Velasquez, break. follows yes, him, but he yes, follows yes, him yes, so yes. slow that he can take his break and, and set up and start all over again without being in any danger. Uh, Another good right hand. All right, and as the fighters go to their corners, let's take a look at a sensational moment from the undercard, 2000 United States Olympian Brian Valoria fighting for a world championship in the light flyweight division. The Hawaiian punch in the white trunks. This is the end of round one, and Valoria landed that sensational right hand to the chin of Eric Ortiz. Ortiz struggled manfully to get up, but at the end of what had been a violent round one, Ortiz fell back to his knees, and Valoria with a first round knockout, became the third member of the 2000 Olympic team to win a world championship, joining Jermaine Taylor and Jeff Lacey. Lacey, who is here tonight. And Emmanuel Stewart, Brian Valori was sensational tonight. Yes, he was. You know, it's, it, he's the smallest guy of the team to win a title, but the most impressive knockout of all of them. In fact, he was considered the biggest puncher on the entire Olympic team in 2000, even though he was the smallest guy. And en route to the ring to score that knockout, Valoria gave a hug to the fighter he fought in his last fight here in Staples Center, a Mexican fighter named Ruben Contreras. The story there was that after Valoria knocked out Contreras in the sixth round, Contreras suffered subdural bleeding and actually was taken to a hospital where he nearly died. Contreras has won the battle for his life. He's getting better. And Valoria dedicated his knockout tonight to his previous opponent. That was very nice of him, too. Also, uh, Jim Valoria, it turns out, something we didn't uh, fully know, is an Hawaiian American, of course, but he is a 100% Filipino background, so that he can uh, take advantage of all the Filipino fans no, 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 uh, who have come out for Pacquiao, and maybe that'll be part of his fan base as well. Copy box numbers through round five. Pacquiao's landed 109 power shots. Velasquez has landed 68. Shows you what a dynamic offensive force Pacquiao is. Shows you that he leaves himself open defensively. Yes, it does. But this is a perfect opponent for him in preparation for the fight with Morales. Because even though he may get tired and he's having a rough contest, the slowness of the opponent, Velasquez, will always permit him to be able to get away. Yeah, there's, a, there's an abrasion alongside the left eye of Velasquez testimony to those right hands he's been catching just like that sizzling right hand inside by Pacquiao 
who has zeroed in in the last couple of rounds and seems to be getting more and more accurate with his power shots. But I'm very impressed with his stamina and his condition, right, because he's thrown a lot of punches, I mean power punches, and still is punching with full power at this stage of the fight. There's a creeping doubt in my mind, stop, stop, stop. Emmanuel, as to whether Manny Pacquiao is really a 130-pound fighter. No, I don't think so. I think his best weight is 126 pounds. And, and when you're fighting guys who are like Morales who are coming in from 140, that natural weight, it can be a big factor late in the fight. Perfect right hand by Pacquiao. Right hook. Stuns Velasquez. Pacquiao trying to finish it. Got 40 seconds to get it done. One of the most vicious finishers in the sport. Velasquez in big trouble now, trying to hold on. Well, Velasquez is doing something that's very smart. Clinch, even if you have to fall down with the opponent. Pacquiao just missed a counter left hand that would have ended the fight. Good job of holding on by Velasquez. He's still staggering. Velasquez is not only hurt, I think fatigue is a big factor now. There's no way I can see him going into the fight. The increasing accuracy of Pacquiao's shots making a difference, and Velasquez goes to his knee as the round comes to a close. They're saying he did so before the bell, so it is a knockdown. And that's a, good a stoppage. Good call by the referee. Something nobody else has done among the name opponents that he has fought in recent years. He is the Pac-Man, Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao does his part, and in typical Manny Pacquiao fashion. He wasn't going to take no for an answer on the knockout quest tonight. I was very impressed tonight. <laughs> Punch and pile, stamina, everything. I was just about to come to the conclusion it was going to be very difficult for him to get that knockout tonight. <laughs> and he stepped up the accuracy of his power shots and, and started landing them all right on the button. And especially the right hook. You know, everyone was looking for the left hand, he landed the right hook, and that's what started most of the problems. All right, let's take a look here. This is the first moment at which Velasquez was hurt. Look at the perfect right hook. As Velasquez was stepping in, Pacquiao picking his spot and nailing him with a, that right hook. The punch that you don't see is the punch that always hurts you. And then a barrage of straight left hands following that. And referee Lou Filippo watching closely to be certain that Velasquez was still throwing, still defending himself. When Velasquez went down, Filippo gave him the count and realized that the Mexican fighter had had enough of Pacquiao's constant storm of power punches. I'm looking very much forward to his fight with Morales. Oh, you are. <laughs> so Manny Pacquiao's luster grows again. And referee, I keep saying Lou Filippo, that's Lou Moret. Let me correct that. We got two Lou's here in California, and that's Lou, Lou Moret who made the good stoppage. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars on the Pacquiao knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Staples Center, Los Angeles, California, Dr. Lou Moret, your referee, calls a halt to the contest following the knockdown, the official time. Two minutes, 59 seconds of round number six. The winner by knockout victory, he is the new WBC Super Featherweight International Champion, Manny Pacman! Heck yeah! Waiting out of the blue corner, wearing blue with white, official weight 129 pounds, professional record. 56 victories, including 36 knockouts, four defeats, with one draw. Damas y caballeros de Guadalajara, Mexico, the challenger, former two-time world champion, Oscar Chololo Lario. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing white, 
with red flames. Official weight, 129, one half pounds. Professional record, 41 victories, including 32 knockouts, three defeats with two draws from General Santos City. Three-time world champion, reigning, defending, WBC International Super Featherweight Champion, the fighting pride of the Philippines, Manny Pacman Pacquiao. So the introductions are done. And we're ready for action, mano a mano. That's all. The referee is Bruce McTavish. Everybody else have veteran. a drink, please. Manny, Oscar, you can give your instructions. Obey my commands at all time. Touch gloves. All right, we're set for round one. This is scheduled for 12. It's for the WBC International Super Featherweight Championship of the World. It's at 130 pounds. Manny Pacquiao decked out in the white trunks with all kinds of sponsorship trim and in the blue trunks with the white trim is Oscar Larios. Larios has got to be careful in the early going because we expect Manny to go right after him. Here we go, round number one. Pacquiao again in white to the right of your screen. Larios goes with the first punch of the fight as he gets that jab out there and he's got to hold him off with the jab. Remember, anything that Pacquiao does, you'll hear a roar of the crowd. Manny with the chin tucked and his eyes up, hands held high, looking for his opportunity to land his first punch as Larios goes into the first uh, shot of the fight. Larios will be trying for a right-hand lead on Manny, which will have to pop in there because Manny Pacquiao has such a good, strong left hand. He'll try the right-hand lead, double left hook. That will be throughout the course of the fight, but his early modus operandi is to get through these early rounds and try to drag this into late territory. That's really his only hope uh, with the Wayne McCullers, I pointed out. The great fight of it, Wayne, is Wayne didn't possess the punching power that Pacquiao is uh, possessing. So, in reality, Larios could throw caution to the wind and just mix it up and hope the better man was standing at the end of those two fights with Wayne because he couldn't knock him down either. But in this case, he's got to really be cautious, keep the jab in the face of Manny Pacquiao and make sure he doesn't get clipped like he did in his last fight against uh, Israel Vasquez. But Manny, he'd like to finish it as quick as he can because there's a huge payday looming for him. And that is, of course, in the third fight with Eric Morales, and I'm sure Bob Arum is tuned in today in Las Vegas, and you can be sure his heart is in his mouth, hoping nothing happens to Manny. Like the only thing that could mess up that fight scheduled for the MGM in Las Vegas. Morales needs to be moving more. He's staying in front of Pacquiao. He needs to be moving side to side so that Pacquiao could not settle into an attack. Well, this Pacquiao with an attack, and he's not able to really land anything. And uh, there's no reach advantage, although Larios was a bit taller. Looks like he has an advantage in reach, but in reality, he doesn't. Body shots exchanged by both guys. Manny hasn't been able to land the left-hand power shot, and he'd like to try and get one on the chin before the end of this uh, first round. But there's only 54 seconds to go, is Manny? Hits him a couple of times with right left hands. That's his powerful shot for the southpaw. And again, you watch Larios work from a distance, and this is the perfect fight for him. By the way, he doesn't even need to win the first two or three rounds. He's got to survive them and get by them, and then try to outbox Pacquiao in the later rounds of the fight. He'll be trying to move to his left, which is good, so he gets away from the power shot of the left-handed fighter. Although Pacquiao has talked about this week, he has more power in his right hand now. So let's see if that comes into play during this fight. But Larios has to go to pick up a way. Now here they go and mix it up a little bit. It's Manny that dictates that as he goes hunting downstairs. He wants to blast the body. If he can't reach the head, he wants to blast the body. Manny faints, bounces side to side, sets himself up, faints again. And a faint's as good as a light jab, a position jab sometimes. Now he rolls the jab out there, slides around, and the bell ends round number one. Pacquiao really didn't do much. He may have to give the first round to Lario. Sure. Well, we're ready to go to number 12 at Araneta Coliseum in Quezon City, Manila, in the Philippines. This is round 12. All right, here we go.
go. This is round number 12, the 12th and final round of the fight. Canario's hanging in there. He needs a knockout if he's going to win. It's not likely that'll happen. But the people appreciate his effort here against Manny Pacquiao, the gifted little guy from the Philippines. Manny would love to finish this off with a knockout. Let's see if he can do it in round number 12. He's on the assault. He clipped him with a good shot. Larios tries to stay up on his toes. Body shots now by Manny Pacquiao. Manny bobs and weaves. Dave, you're going to go in there when the fight's over and try to talk to both of these guys. I'm going to look forward to that and see what Manny had to say about Larios hanging in as long as he has and what Larios has to say about Manny. Right. Yeah, about how well he'll do uh, down the road because these guys uh, have fought, showed something that for Larios, having a little bit of height and reach and using it well, plus the conditioning, has kept him in the fight. For Pacquiao, working inside, a little bit of a taller guy, and doing what was necessary will give him this win. Manning get clipped there at the, about the two-minute mark, remaining with a pretty good shot, but the legs of Larios are a little bit out right now. And you know that he's very heavy in the heels, although he tries to get up on his toes, but he's in magnificent shape coming into this fight, and he really, really worked hard. And the pace of this fight is another thing. I mean, there's been non-stop action in this fight from the get-go. Good action, and you know, people who are going to sit there and compare now what, what happens with Pacquiao, Morales, etc. He has walked into a good number of right hands tonight, and against somebody with more power, there will be that speculation about, will that hurt him in future fights? So there's a lot of risk for the mill when you look at Pacquiao's future fights. That's and for Larios, he has performed well on a world stage. He went away, he trained, he fought well. He will get another fight on the heels of this because you can be a beneficiary of low expectations. an accumulation of punches. And, the, and now and it's kind of academic what might happen in this fight. Manny Pacquiao had him down and would like to knock him out here in the last 30 seconds of this fight. Hilarios, he just wants to survive this round now. He throws a shot. There's no quitting, Larios, and he's taking two more big shots. But he throws his own. He ties up Manny Pacquiao. He's not in strictly survival mode. He wants to try to finish strong. Manny's got the smile on his face, and now we're inside of 10 seconds to go. How about this? Oscar Larios apparently will survive the fight. He won't get the decision, but he's made it a great war and a wonderful prize fight. Listen to the crowd reaction. Mumbai Borgoni scores at 117-110. Daniel Vanderville, 118, 108. Novorad Svicharwin, 120, 106. To the winner and still champion, the fighting time of the Philippines, Manny. International Super Featherweight Championship. Uh, let's get ready to rumble. Thomas Gabriela de Guadalajara, Mexico. Jorge El Coloradito Soli. Fighting out of General Santos City, Philippines, Manny Pacman. Pacquiao. Super featherweight title. You received your instructions addressing you. With that said, I want you to obey my commands, protect yourselves at all times. Touch them up now, good luck to both of you. Tokolo, buena suerte, ambos. 28 year old with a Hall of Fame career already. And here's something that, that I like already of uh, going to the right, to his the opposite way when they fight a southpaw. And you I believe. Like, uh, fighter moving to the right. Oh, I love it. Oh, interesting. Okay. And he's able to get countered. 
Matt Clark from ability is how does he handle the moment the same way where he frees up. So far, you know, yeah, yeah, I'm looking for a cautious at all times. Because my captain finished you off. From here in round one, Pack and see what Solis has to offer. Manny Pacquiao, or due to the machinations of the boxing titles, but he's number one in the WBC. He's generally considered probably the best at that weight class, if not number one. I would like to see Jorge Solis pull that right there looking for the hit a lot of times. Take some power on Pacquiao. Pacquiao gets him against the ropes. There's to the body now. How about a jab or two? That would be nice. Oh, a pretty close first round. Solis is for a brother. I feel like I'm fighting Manny Pacquiao. Yeah. <laughs> and they're very, very close. Uh, I'm going to make a case for that. There's no question. I agree with you. I, I believe that Solis did win that round. We're in round number two. Of course, it's a special 12 rounder. Very wild and awkward in there, and that won't benefit. Frustrated. Make him make mistakes. Getting a little frustrated because he can't get in. He's, he's right there. I believe that uh, Solis said it when he saw Manny Pacquiao go in like that. Pacquiao's left gets in. Important punch for him, we all know. You know, we have take this one quite as seriously as those fights. Side of boxing. Uh, but I believe he's going to make him feel it. One of those outside interests. I'm not campaigning. Obviously, I, when I'm training, I put all right. When this is all done, I'll go back and can know all about boxing. Well, you know, there's more time before the fight said to me if he loses this fight. Just seconds remaining here in round two. A better round for at least the pace of the fight for Solis. And his right hand been getting in by Jorge Solis. So it's for Manny Pacquiao. We head into round number three. White Trunks, of course, the great champion in both the uh, junior lightweight, down and junior featherweight, taking on Jorge Solis. And he gets connected a couple of times. Not utilizing what he's supposed to, and that's that jab and reach. And he's it enough, and that was the weapon he wanted. Uh, you know, in his fight against Nicky Benz, jabs per round, according to Box, did Jorge Solis. That's what they want in this fight as well. Pacquiao's warming to his path now a little bit than he was in the first round anyway. You know, the interesting thing about Manny Pacquiao, fighting an excellent fighter, he makes a lot of fundamental three one and one against the, the Eric Morales, uh, Juan Manuel Marquez, and Marco Antonio Roberto. Right. Them even take advantage of it. Certainly, well, he's certainly one of those guys you would never young fighter fight like Manny Pacquiao. You would never do that. He's like the only guy that can do it. Yes, and he now let's go here in round number three. Manny Pacquiao and Solis, and so far, while Pacquiao has first Solis has been certainly competitive hand downstairs by Solis. White mesh. Yeah, so far the only place that had pretty good has been the one that Pacquiao just landed. So, a little more active than he was. I'm getting there. He's just so. So just seconds remain in round three. And it gets that straight left hand. There's the Solis jab that everyone's in the green throw a little bit more. Certainly including his brother. Pacquiao comes into this fight 17 1 and 2 record and 16 KOs. And I don't realize those things hurt. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, he didn't take much time back at it here in round four. Left gets in. Do you know, it looks to me like you deal with right now. Yeah, the, the height of that, I mean, people who see like, should realize and understand that he has a, little, a lot of trouble with fighting. Like, you know, Manuel Marquez did. That's right. You know, because. Not the height, but also the movement. There's something awkward about this that's making Pacquiao look a little awkward himself. It looks like there is a little blood somewhere on uh, Solis's, Solis's lip, we think. We'll check it out. Here's my question, though. Has anybody fought better than Eric Morales did in the first fight and in most... Probably not. Yeah. And, you know, and Morales be able to hold on to win the first fight and got knocked out. At least beat Pacquiao with this kind of an approach. I'm going to say that maybe Juan Manuel might have fought him. Just okay. as yeah, well, he fought only because well, he got yeah. dropped in the, in the first round three times. But other than his way of fighting, and he made an offering. So right. he's just kind of picking his shots. Nice left hand by Pacquiao. May have stunned so loose. Ended by Pacquiao. That lands. Oh, very coming. I want to say he had to shoot that right away. And he's very quick with his hand. I'm going to change my score first. You know, oh, it's, you you feel free it. to have a mind of your own. And it's amazing that they're they're actually telling uh, his punches. <laughs> it's easy for Archie to yeah, say. Exactly. We're in rounds between 
12 and 15,000 here at the Alamo. See Manny Pacquiao and Jorge Solis. And so far, Jorge Solis. Pacquiao was just complaining again about another uh, left hand to the hip. What was going on there was that uh, Solis tried to throw a straight right to the was kind of slipped it down. That's the reason why. Probably the best opponent that Solis has fought is Humberto Soto. He's a very good fighter, and the, uh, in the third round, there was clash of heads and a cut. But Soto had it, and uh, so clearly, if you can get Jorge Solis down, Soto did it. By the way, an I irony is that Soto is fighting Bobby Mother of Manny Pacquiao in June. That's a fight I would really like Manny against Soto, because Soto is a monster. Good straight to the right. Here comes Soto against the ropes. <laughs> an attack. Playing possum. I agree. I don't think Manny plays much possible. <laughs> Normally he gets mad and goes up. Nice, nice jab by Soli. Yes. Uh, but not often, he pointed out, Eric Morales certainly had a success with that. Yeah, doesn't it seem, though, that Pat less aggressive in this fight than, than he used to see him? Well, he's coming forward and throwing punches, but not they're just not as effective as he'd like there to be. So, uh, uh, Solis. Just second round five. This has been a pretty good round for Jorge Soli. statement. Though he's probably still behind in this fight, he's making some things happen against. You know that this did have an impact. It creates that cut here in round number five. And I and I don't think so. Lee should be doing it right now. He should be smart. Just because there's blood on the eye doesn't mean they. Oh, good, straight right. Would cause a stoppage in this fight because it was a clash of heads and they bang heads again. It would. Oh, there's a left hand that sends Lee down. Oh, 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 they're a push. They're he's calling it a push. 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 Which is interesting. The, streaming down Pacquiao's face now. If they had to. Oh, big right hook by Pacquiao. The left hand, and Solis is in some trouble. There goes a push by Pacquiao. He's trying to muscle his way in. Solis has been hurt here in the sixth round. Excuse me, I said the fifth. I meant the sixth. This is now the Pacquiao that I think everybody expected to see. And this is what I expected to see of Solis right here, trying to avoid kind of getting hurt because he doesn't pick up his hands. That clash of heads and the cut over the eye woke up Manny Pacquiao. He is in trouble. He's trying desperately to fit. Maybe he's a little bit more worried about the cut. Well, he should know. They'll go to the store. Oh, Big hook. Pacquiao may have punched himself out a little bit. Now there's a lead. typical Manny Pacquiao war, isn't it? <laughs> I will, but we don't know. Pacquiao had Solis in bad trouble. Cover quickly. He got hit with some good shots. Right hand gets in by two great events. There's a right hand by Solis. You can see the fall inside, especially if he throws his right hand, and that's why the hit. Two left hands hurt Solis. Two good straight left hands got him. So at least he needs to pick up a lot of guys. It's the relentless pressure after a while. Those that Pacquiao has had have come within six rounds. Pails have come within six rounds. So they're in a minute left to go, or just under a seven of this 12-rounder. Main event of the evening, and there's another one of those round as well. So he's to fire his opponent so much that they tend to work down the range to the right when they're getting ready to throw that lift. I'm surprised that number seven. Himself an excellent seventh round. A glass of heads created a cut uh, in round six of Manny Pacquiao. Uh, they have controlled it. For you know, and I think they've run out of ideas in Solis' corner. Yeah. You know, we're you know, <laughs> listening, and uh, they've invoked the uh, the family. He's in trouble, and down goes Solis. He's sent to the canvas. In this yeah, he, he got hurt right there, and then there's that, there's that right uppercut. That lip uppercut that dropped him. Joe, oh, he he does right. round, of course. There goes that uppercut again. He's hurt. He's out. Oh, it's it. It's so, over. And there's the end of the fight again. Double left. There's a gym, uh, straight right and a left to finish. On the yes, apron of the ring. Ocho, nueve, yes. Count. He's not going to get the count. Manny wow. Backley's slow start. Got things in gear. It's an advance and very relieved, I think, to, to get this match. The winner by knockout victory and still the WBC International Super Featherweight Trap. Getting better and better. And already Diaz begins to hit him in the body with the punches that are aimed at asking how well Pacquiao is trained. And already Pacquiao shows 
the speed advantage that makes him so special. But I'm a great pack job. Again, the uppercut with a left hand from Pacquiao. Again, a body shot from Diaz. Momentarily drives Manny back. Hand speed tremendously in Pacquiao's favor. Yeah, Pacquiao's doing a beautiful job of boxing. He's putting his combinations together. Good left hand by Diaz. Caught Pacquiao right between punches. Lands a left. Crowd looking for him to land something big. And Diaz didn't manage to block the right hand. Big left over the top by Pacquiao. Big left over the top by Diaz. Blood coming from the right eye of David Diaz. Pacquiao threw something that's very unusual. Beautiful combination. Right uppercut, then followed by left, up, right uppercut, up between the gloves. He's doing it against a southpaw after not having fought one for years. Big right hook by Pacquiao. Another big right hook right on the button by Pacquiao. Two good body shots for Diaz. And a third for good measure. Pacquiao again with that right hook, right uppercut combination. Tremendous work with the right hand by Pacquiao. Hooking and uppercutting just the same way we saw Andre Berto. And Diaz, his only response is to get more aggressive and try to do more damage, and that's what he's trying to do. Leaving himself open for Pacquiao. A southpaw Jack Dempsey in the lightweight division. A non-stop aggressor with speed and power beyond compare. Perfect shot by Pacquiao. Hard right hand by Pacquiao. Uppercut. Target practice right now for the most part. Left hand pot shot across the top. Two quick right hands inside. Another uppercut. Hard left hand might at the same time. That's exactly what I was thinking of. You know, well, normally when he's just a cut man, it's different because he concentrates. No way Diaz will quit to the crowd as he continues to fire resolutely in round six. Storm once again continues. See, Pacquiao throwing punches in such a volume, and they're all coming from different angles. He's mixing up, and that's why it's so hard for Diaz to stop the punches because he's not just doing one punch or two, it's just the speed and the variety of punches. He won't win this fight unless he end up with another disqualification. Look at the combinations. Stop for the center. Referee's gonna have to stop the fight. Diaz gets in a good left uppercut of his own. Fires a straight jab, comes forward to make clear I'm still a fighter. I'm not gonna go away. Don't stop in the fight now. Increasingly on the defensive, Diaz has less and less to offer as the eighth round. Manny Pacquiao has made his statement. There isn't much reason beyond a few moments like that for this to keep going forward. Tremendous straight left hand shot, brave enough to compete on any level. And, and get he's hurt. proven that. Bloodier, more brutal finish. How many more? It stops the fight. It should have never got to that. First place. Right on the chin. Through eight rounds, the three judges' scores were 80 to 71, 80 to 72, 80 to 71. Totally academic.